Have you ever thought about how we measure time? How did we come up with the idea of dividing a day into 24 hours, and then dividing each hour into 60 minutes, and each minute into 60 seconds? In this video, we'll explore the history and science of timekeeping, from ancient civilizations to modern technology. So buckle up and get ready to travel through time. Let's start our journey in ancient times, when people first realized the importance of measuring time. One of the earliest devices for measuring time was the sundial, which used the shadow cast by the sun to indicate the time of day. Sundials were used by the ancient Egyptians, Babylonians, and Greeks, among others. However, sundials had some limitations, as they were only accurate during daylight hours and required frequent adjustment for seasonal variations. Later, water clocks were invented, which used the flow of water to measure time. Water clocks were used by the ancient Chinese, Persians, and Greeks, and were more accurate than sundials, as they could be used day and night. However, water clocks had their own problems, such as leaks and evaporation, and were not portable. The next major development in timekeeping was the mechanical clock, which was invented in medieval Europe around the 14th century. Mechanical clocks used a system of gears and weights to keep time, and were much more accurate and reliable than previous devices. Mechanical clocks allowed for more precise timekeeping, and also enabled the use of hours, minutes, and seconds, which were not practical with earlier devices. However, mechanical clocks were still relatively large and expensive, and were mainly used in churches and public places. It wasn't until the 17th century that portable pocket watches became popular, and timekeeping became more accessible to the general public. The next major leap in timekeeping came with the invention of the pendulum clock by Dutch scientist Christian Huygens in 1656. Pendulum clocks used a swinging pendulum to regulate the movement of the gears, and were even more accurate than earlier mechanical clocks. Pendulum clocks became the standard for accurate timekeeping for over two centuries, until the invention of the quartz clock in the 20th century. The quartz clock, invented in 1927 by Warren Marison, used a quartz crystal oscillator to keep time, which was much more precise than the mechanical methods used before. Quartz clocks were also smaller and cheaper than earlier clocks, and were soon used in everything from watches to clocks to computers. However, quartz clocks still had some inaccuracies due to variations in temperature and other factors. Finally, in the late 20th century, atomic clocks were invented, which used the vibrations of atoms to keep time. Atomic clocks are incredibly accurate and precise, and can measure time to within a billionth of a second. Atomic clocks are used today in GPS satellites, telecommunications, and other advanced technologies that require precise time measurement. Post. So, now that we know how we measure time, let's go back to the original question, why do we have 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 seconds in a minute? The answer lies in the ancient civilizations that first divided the day into smaller units. The Babylonians, who lived in Mesopotamia around 2000 BCE, used a sexagesimal system based on the number 60. 
This system was likely influenced by their use of the 360-degree circle for measuring angles. The Babylonians divided the day into 24 hours, each hour into 60 minutes, and each minute into 60 seconds. This system was later adopted by the Greeks and then by the Romans, and has remained in use ever since. Of course, the length of an hour or a minute is not exactly 1 24th or 1 60th of a day. The length of a day is determined by the rotation of the Earth on its axis, which is not perfectly constant due to factors such as the Moon's gravitational pull. In fact, the length of a day has been increasing by about 1.8 milliseconds per century due to the Moon's tidal effects on the Earth's rotation. To compensate for these variations, a system of leap years and leap seconds has been introduced. Leap years add an extra day to the calendar every four years to keep the calendar year in sync with the solar year, while leap seconds are added periodically to keep atomic time in sync with the Earth's rotation. The most recent leap second was added on December 31, 2016. In conclusion, the history and science of timekeeping is a fascinating subject that has been evolving for thousands of years. From sundials to atomic clocks, humans have been striving to measure time more accurately and efficiently. So, the next time you look at your watch or check your phone, remember the long and winding journey that led to the 24-hour day and the 60-minute hour. Thank you for watching.